An area of Arctic sea ice the size of Canada and Alaska combined has been lost. That's according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. An animation released by the U.S. agency shows the daily average sea ice between 1979 and 2012. And for the first time since satellite observations began, ice cover is less than 4 million square kilometers. Scientists say the drastic decline is a strong sign of long-term global warming. But the last month and the last year were the hottest ever recorded, hottest of all time since they started keeping records. Of course, in terms of drought, we're feeling the effects this year, but look at the numbers from just today. Little Rock, Arkansas, a high today of 101, Tulsa, 105, Salt Lake City, 103, and in Phoenix, Arizona, a new record today of 114. And the news here appears to be, we'd better get used to it. The signs have been everywhere. Highways buckling, planes trapped in melted asphalt, cracked earth across the Midwest. Today, the government scientists who monitor the nation's weather made it official. July 2012 was the hottest month ever. It is a big deal. You know, our, our, we have over 1,400 months of record dating back to 1895. In fact, the average temperature for this July was 77.6 degrees. That is 3.3 degrees hotter than the 20th century average, and that's just July. The biggest impact of all this heat is the drought. 33 years we've always had a crop, but you know, it, it's not looking good right now. More than half of the country experienced moderate to exceptional drought conditions at the end of July. That's up almost 7% from the month before. It is a large increase for any given month, uh, you know, 7% of the country, that is uh, a significant portion of the country, and most of that has been driven by the warmer than average temperatures. Heat and drought conditions set the perfect stage for wildfires. We could be looking at a new normal. The, the long-term temperature trend across the U.S. is increasing. A trend many Americans may not want to think about warming up to. So far, this is the hottest year on record in the United States, and we're also seeing the most widespread drought in 70 years. Nearly 1,300 counties in 31 states across the country have been declared natural disaster areas due to the excessive heat and drought this summer. 88% of the corn crop has been impacted by drought conditions. More of the frozen sea has been melting in the past three decades, and scientists think this may be changing the patterns of our weather. The new research suggests a key factor is the retreat of the Arctic ice. Over the last 30 years, satellites have captured a dramatic reduction in ice during the regular summer melt. The Arctic used to be covered in snow until May or June. Chris Dirksen has studied the Arctic snowpack, and he's discovered over the last 40 years, it shrunk to about half the area it used to be. There are significant uh, reductions in the amount of area covered by snow. Uh, and that this, uh, the last five or 10 years in particular, have seen sig significant drops. And that's causing big problems. Less spring snow reflecting the sun's heat leads to even warmer Arctic temperatures. Losing that snowpack is having a direct effect on the ice in the Arctic Ocean. Scientists say it's no coincidence that this year, the polar ice cap shrank to the smallest size ever recorded. David Barber has been studying the northern ice for 30 years. He says the spring snow used to act as an insulating blanket for the Arctic ice, but not anymore. You do get a precipitation event. It's typically in the form of rain. And this has really changed how the sea ice is able to sustain itself into the spring. And that's part of the, the situation of why we're losing so much sea ice. The effects aren't just in the north. The loss of the Arctic sea ice is connected to global climate change. That, in turn, is linked to more extreme weather events around the world, like droughts and hurricanes. And this whole climate change scenario that's happening in the ice in the Arctic is affecting all of these things, and snow is one of the most fundamental parts of that change.
The Arctic sea ice is retreating as climate change advances. The change being felt in this fragile world is caused by us. And it's happening so fast, it's defying scientific models. For many, the endangered polar bear is a powerful reason to stop the rate of climate change in the Arctic. But there are far more urgent reasons why scientists say we should be listening to their warnings. The most immediate worry is that the melting sea ice will intensify the extreme weather caused by climate change, bringing more violent storms and cyclones to some regions and longer droughts to others. The expectation is that we'll see more extraordinary weather in general, but in particular, more frequent droughts in some of the areas that are already prone to dryness. Dr. Scambos believes in the Arctic, the sea ice melt has reached a tipping point, and predicting the speed of climate change there will be increasingly difficult. The tipping point is where you've uh, pushed a system into a state where with no further pushing, uh, it will rapidly change into another state. And what we're seeing right now in the last few years is that the Arctic loses so much of its ice every summer that, again, solar energy heats the water underneath it. The older ice is pushed out of the Arctic Ocean, so there's a very thin cover of ice. And without any further input, it doesn't have to get any warmer, it seems as though the Arctic simply can't recover, can't replace the ice that it's lost every year because every year, more heat gets deposited into the Arctic than can be radiated away in, in the winter darkness. What really concerns us from the viewpoint of the climate science is the connectedness of the climate system. In other words, what happens up there in the Arctic, the seemingly far away place, can have profound influences on other parts of the planet. We can think of the Arctic as the refrigerator of the northern hemisphere climate system. What we're doing by getting rid of that sea ice is radically changing the nature of that refrigerator. We're making it much less efficient, but everything is connected together. So what happens up there eventually influences what happens in other parts of the globe. And that is the weather. That is the weather, yes. And this is particularly important because of, for example, impacts on agriculture. Think of the American breadbasket in the American West and Midwest where as so much corn is grown. We start to change patterns of temperature and precipitation. The more we burn oil, gas and coal, the more we clear land, the more greenhouse gases are being released, adding to the Arctic warming. Climate doesn't change just by itself. Something has to force that change. It's very clear and unambiguous that the changes we've seen over the past 50 years or so are due to increased concentrations of atmospheric greenhouse gases. And we know without a doubt that those increases are due to our activities. They're due to us.